Mr. President, this is a historic day, uh, not only for our country, but I think the world is watching us. And it is because we have a pressing issue uh, called globing, uh, global warming, climate change, you can call it either one. And scientists have told us that, in fact, we have a very small window right now with which to, within which to respond. But it's a historic day because for the first time we got, I call it tripartisan legislation out of the Environment and Public Works Committee. It's the, it's the Boxer, Lieberman, Warner bill. It's a Democrat, it's a independent, and it is a Republican. And we have come together to say to our colleagues and to the American people, finally, we are going to deal with this critical challenge. I want to take a moment to thank Senator Reid for scheduling this matter. There were a lot of voices saying, why do this now? Why do we have to do this now? And I know, because I came to the Congress with Harry Reid, why he wants to do this now. Because it is, in fact, one of the greatest challenges of our generation. And we have to respond with a landmark bill. And it will take us a while. And we must get started. And we certainly hope our colleagues will vote to get started. And if they don't vote to get started, they're going to have to explain why they have turned their backs on the world's leading scientists, on the Bush administration's own cabinet members who, or rather, not cabinet members, but own um, political appointees, such as the head of the CDC, who told us that we face real problems if we don't act, such as uh, the vectors that will now live in warming waters. They will be turning their backs on the intelligence community, the, uh, uh, the military community who have looked out in the future and have written papers telling us, and this is ma a main reason John Warner is into this, that if we don't act, that we are going to see <laughs> desperate refugees throughout the world. We're going to see droughts and floods such as worse than the ones we've seen. And when refugees are moving, uh, because of rising waters, droughts, or floods, uh, you're going to see wars uh, develop in all parts of the world. So that's why Senator Reid said yes. He said yes. He said yes to American leadership. And that's what we want to say. By moving to this bill and supporting it, we say yes to green jobs. You know, it's very interesting because the president already said he's going to veto this bill if it passes. And I have to say, one of the reasons he gave is that in one of the models, it shows that gas prices will go up 50 cents a gallon in 20 years. That would be two cents a year, when in fact, if you look at the record of this administration, and they've done nothing to stop it, gas prices have gone up under their watch 250%. Just take a look at this chart. 250% from $1.47 to $3.94, 250%, this administration did nothing. And so now when they come forward and they say, oh, we can't pass this bill, gas prices will go up, here's the truth. The truth is, because we are going to get better fuel economy and a bill that the president did sign, and we're glad he supported this part, you're going to be putting less fuel in your tank. So even if it's more per gallon, you're going to be getting better mileage. You're not going to feel that two cents a year. And secondly, and Mr. President, this is key, it is very fitting for this administration that has supported big oil and supported foreign oil and goes to, you know, the Middle East and hold hands with the leaders there and kisses them on the cheek and begs for oil, it is very fitting they're still the voice of the status quo, Mr. President. They're still the voice of continuing our dependence on oil. This is what has happened without a climate change bill. This is what has happened without a bill to fight global warming. We see this ridiculously <coughs> impossible increasing costs, and then the administration does nothing about this but is scaring the people and saying they're going to get hit with higher prices. Let me also address this. 
in this Boxer Lieberman Warner substitute that is before us. We have in there two things that we didn't have in the Lieberman Warner bill. One is a deficit reduction fund. And you could take down the chart now. It's too ugly to look at. In the Boxer Lieberman Warner bill, we did not have a deficit reduction trust fund. And and therefore, people could have argued this is going to be a terrible thing for us as we look out into the future. We put that in there, and CBO says our bill is deficit neutral. We also have in this bill a very large piece, almost a trillion dollars, of tax relief so that when we do see some increases in energy costs in the early years, electricity, for example, we can offset that. We can offset that because there'll be tax relief and then there'll be this consumer relief that will go through the utilities where they will give rebates immediately. Now, for those people who say, oh, my goodness, uh, we're moving forward with this and we need to make sure we can get off the track, I want to say thank you to Senators Bingaman and Specter, who in their bill had created what I thought was a very important off-ramp. The one thing I didn't agree with them on is the price they pegged for the price of carbon, because the business people I spoke to, including Silicon Valley, said, that's a mess. If the price is too low, then businesses will simply not invest. And the Silicon Valley people and the investors from across this country, and we had one at a press conference today who said he represented, I think he said, $4 trillion fund, said they are waiting to invest in new green technologies, in new jobs. They are waiting to do it. They are waiting for this legislation, but they won't do it unless we don't have an easy off-ramp. We have an off-ramp that can be used in circumstances that warrant it. And we have put the number between $22 and $30, which reflects the consensus of the labor groups as well as the environmental groups. So we have tried to come together and we have tried to put this together in such a way that it essentially moves us forward, takes us where we have to go, and takes us there in a way that will mean the creation of millions of jobs. So some of our colleagues will say this. Why do this now? We're in a recession. Precisely because we're in a recession is why we should be doing this. This bill is the first thing that brings us hope. You know, we sent back a rebate check to people. I'm really glad we did it. I voted for it. Guess what? We had no money to do that, Mr. President. We had to go into the red to do that. We had to go into deficit spending to send back a rebate check. This bill gives us the funds to give relief to our consumers. This bill does that. And I want to compliment Judd Gregg because I've had meetings with him, and this was his point. Now, mind you, he wants to give it all back to the taxpayers. We use some of it for investments in these new technologies so we can swiftly move away from foreign oil and big oil. But it was Judd Gregg, who I know is not a fan of our bill, again, because of what I said, gave us this idea and this notion that we could have these funds to return to our consumers. I know that Senator Warner, who is on the floor now, um, has many contributions he's going to talk about in this bill, and I won't go into details, but he also said it was important that the president has an ability to say, wait a minute, this bill goes a little too far, we have to take a pause, a time out, and he's written it in such a way that I'm very supportive of it, as it balances the powers of the president and Congress, and he'll talk more about it. And now that I see that my two colleagues are on the floor, I haven't had a chance to thank them on the Senate floor. So I want to say to Senator Lieberman and Warner how much they mean to me on this issue and also personally. And I won't get um, overly emotional about it at all, but I will say this about Senator Warner. Senator Warner has a legacy that if he didn't do one more thing in the Senate, if he just decided to just come by and say hi to us for his last six, eight months, it would have been enough. It would have been 10 times what most of us will achieve. 
His legacy on national security, Mr. Chairman, is unparalleled, and you know that, you and I know that, and you've spoken to me about it. But when Senator Warner came to me, since I'm now chair of the Environment and Public Works Committee, which is the greatest and deepest honor I've ever had, and he said, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this, Barbara, and I really think we have to move. We have to get America back into a leadership position. And I have told Joe Lieberman, he said, that I'm going to work with him. And I knew at that moment that we would, in fact, reach this day. Now, even reaching this day wasn't easy. When you read how a bill becomes a law, and it says you take it to the subcommittee, and the subcommittee approves it, and you take it to the full committee, and the full committee approves it, then you take it to the floor, and the floor approves it. This was difficult for us to get it through the subcommittee, and then to get it through the full committee, and now to take it to the floor. We know this isn't easy. We know this is difficult. All great matters of the day are not easy. They take time. They take effort. Landmark laws take effort. They don't happen overnight. But you know, at moments like these, when we're dealing with such a big issue, we should think back to our predecessors. When our predecessors in Congress saw rivers on fire from pollution, or contaminated water that made us sick, or filthy air that filled our lungs, and magnificent creatures like the bald eagle close to extinction, Congress acted. We didn't, we weren't afraid. We weren't afraid. We stepped up to the plate and we said, this is America and our ingenuity can resolve these questions. We could have walked away, they could have walked away, but they didn't walk away. And now we're going to find out who's going to walk away from this and who's going to step up to the plate. I think it is that important. And the American people deserve to know who is willing to step up to the plate. Now, look, every bill means we have to compromise. Lord knows. I'm looking at my friend, Senator Warner. I'm smiling because I'm thinking of the many times he said to me, Senator, I don't think I can go there with you. <laughs> And then he wanted something, and I said, Senator, I just don't think I can go there with you. But we met halfway here. We met halfway. And that's what we need to do in the Senate. I want to say that my colleagues in the Senate, including Senator Webb, who's sitting in the chair, have allowed me into their lives, into their offices. We have talked for hours. I have heard their concerns. They have raised questions in many cases. They have led us in a good direction to be stronger. For example, in the case of, of Senator Webb, his, he had many concerns, and one of them happened to be, what about you know the countries we trade with? Aren't they going to have an advantage? And I cited the Bingham Inspector Bill again and said, well, we took something really good from that bill. We took that part of Senator Specter that deals with saying, if countries come and want to bring in a lot of uh, products into our nation and their countries aren't doing anything about this, they're going to have to buy allowances. They're going to have to do their part. And these are the kinds of things that we'll hope to strengthen uh, in this bill. Look, we have clear evidence, evidence that greenhouse gas pollution will cause our planet to heat up well beyond what is safe. We have to act. And I don't want to do more than is necessary, and I don't want to do less than is necessary. I'm trying to find that just right spot. And I do agree with Senator Warner that because we're looking out into the future, we have to give the president, now and in the future, the ability to say, let's take another look. And we also have to continue to look to the scientists. And therefore, in our bill, we, we say the scientists should submit a report every few years, is it? And we need to see if we're doing too much or too little or it's just right and adjust to it. Um, I think that, and I mentioned this before, Senator Reid does deserve a lot of credit for bringing this bill forward. We have wasted time. Look, I blame myself. I blame myself. I didn't grab the reins of this thing early enough in my career. And I have to say, Senator Lieberman did. Senator McCain raised the issue early on. I had some problems with their approach, but I didn't engage. My, I admit that. This is the hardest thing for anyone to admit, for a senator to say, I was wrong. 
I was wrong. I didn't get it. And when I steep myself into this, and I have to give credit to Al Gore and all the people who came before the committee when I got the gavel a, a year ago or so, a year and a half by now, and we said, you know, we're going to look at this thing. I didn't have all the answers then. I had a lot of questions. We had the world's leading scientists. We had religious leaders. We had, uh, we had um, state leaders. We had Republicans. We had Democrats. We had businesses. We had mayors. Really, we had 25 full-blown hearings on this, plus we had lunches and we had dinners where we invited in the scientists, the experts, the people in Europe who have taken the lead to ask them questions. They made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, and we were nervous about that. I remember one of the first times Senators Liebman Warner and I spoke was, we have to make sure that whatever bill we work on doesn't give rise to uh, you know, speculation and, 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 and quick, rich schemes. So we've been very careful to learn from the mistakes that Europe has made. But you know, when you, when you cut it all up and you look at it, and you look at Great Britain, for example, a very small country compared to us, they've cut back uh, carbon by 15%, and in the same time, they've raised their gross domestic product by 45%. They've created 500,000 new jobs. You don't have to go that far. Go to my state of California. We are in a terrible mess right now because of the housing crisis. We have so much of a foreclosure problem. We have a recession in housing and in construction. And I was told unequivocally that because of our global warming legislation, we have there 450 new solar businesses. And I'm not even looking at nuclear and I'm not looking at wind. I'm just looking at solar. 450 companies have formed and they are hiring many of the workers that are losing their jobs in the construction industry. So there are ways to do it that are wrong. There are ways to do it that are right. Now today, you will hear from those who wish to kill this bill. Kill it, kill it as dead as they can. They say it's too complicated, that we should do nothing, and we should continue the status quo. Well, the status quo is devastating, my friends. The scientists have told us that. The price of gas is off the charts. And my friend Senator Liebman made this point beautifully at a press conference we had. The whole point of the bill is to get us off oil, is to unleash the genius of America so that their investments in alternatives, alternative fuels, cars that get better fuel efficiency. And I will tell you this, just knowing what I know from California, it is going to have a positive and beneficial effect. Whereas if we turn away out of fear, out of fear mongering, out of scare tactics, out of saying global warming's a hoax, it doesn't exist, look at scientist X, look at scientist Y, you'll hear it all on this floor. You'll hear it all on this floor. But I remind you, there were people who said the world was flat, even when everyone knew it wasn't. There were people who said cigarettes didn't cause cancer, even when the rest of us knew it did. There are still people who say HIV doesn't cause AIDS. They're wrong, and I could go on. Oh, airbags, that won't save lives. Wrong. When you stand up on this Senate floor, whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent, whether you're short or tall or medium, whenever you challenge the status quo, watch out, folks, because the slings and arrows are going to be at your back, at your front, at your side. And I'm ready for it. Why am I ready for it? I'm ready for it because we have an unbelievable partnership on this bill. The quality of this partnership runs deep. Lieberman and Warner. Lieberman and Warner. How much time do I have remaining? Senator has 30 seconds remaining. Oh, uh, correction, the Senator has uh, five minutes and 15 seconds remaining. Thank you very much. The partnership on this runs deep. I've mentioned Senators Lieberman and Warner. Every member of my committee on the Democratic side and even some on the Republican side who didn't like the bill contributed to the debate. Colleagues all over the Senate helped us. 
The Energy Committee helped us. I will tell you, I went into members' offices and I got great ideas from those members. I mentioned Senator Gregg gave me a great idea. He doesn't like this bill because he wants to give all the money back. He doesn't want to invest any of the money. But he gave me a great idea on the tax cut. We had Senators Cantwell and Senator Murray point out the importance of hydropower and how we could address that. And I could name colleague after colleague. Senator John Warner, who will be here for a lot of this debate, a magnificent voice on this subject. I put him in the category of Al Gore on this subject. He knows what he's talking about. He helped so much without any credit. He put together business meetings. He put together dinners. He had people come over. We studied together. We studied with scientists. It was like going to school. Senator Kerry, Senator Casey, and I could go on with other colleagues. The fact is, I'm not fearful of what's going to come at us starting soon, because we have the facts on our side, and we have a deep well of support from colleagues who really know their stuff. Eleven National Academies of Science concluded climate change is real. The Nobel Prize winning Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, global warming is unequivocal. Human health impacts, children and the elderly vulnerable. And I have lots of other information which I don't have the time to do. I mentioned national security. National security, a report by the Center for Naval Analysis found that the United States could more frequently be drawn into situations of conflict to help provide stability before conditions worsen and are exploited by extremists. This is what Senator Warner said so wisely. So in summing up at this point, I urge my colleagues to vote yes to proceed. I don't know whether there's going to be a deliberate effort to try and stop us on this motion to proceed because I haven't been informed. I can only say to colleagues, don't be fearful because you have nothing to be fearful about. I'll tell you what there is to be fearful about, doing nothing, saying no, turning your back on the scientists, on the religious leaders who are with us, <coughs> on the mayors, the governors, on so many supporters who understand this. That will be dangerous because gas prices are shooting up to the sky and if we don't get off of oil, that's our future. With this bill, that is not our future. So if you want to be afraid, and that's your, mo that's your motive to be afraid, you want to be afraid, vote no. If you want to start to address energy independence, clean energy, if you want to address the threats that science says we face, vote yes on the motion to proceed. Let's get down to this and have a great debate in the Senate tradition because this issue definitely deserves to have that kind of debate. And I would yield the floor.